This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. In today's episode, you will learn how to make IoT temperature monitoring system using MLX90614 contactless infrared temperature sensor. Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, SSD1306 I2C supported or LED display module, and blink application. Just don't skip this part of the video because there are certain things which I believe you should know if you want to get the most accurate temperature readings using the MLX9614 temperature sensor. As you know very well the MLX9614 is a non-contact infrared temperature sensor and is completely different from those surface contact based temperature sensors and you might also know every object or material has its own emissivity value. Just think for a minute, the temperature monitoring system which you are planning to build is going to be used for measuring the temperature of a specific object or you want to measure the temperature of any random object. This is really an important question which you need to ask yourself. Let's say you are designing a contactless temperature monitoring system for COVID patients and you ignore the emissivity value of the human skin, then how you're supposed to get an accurate temperature reading? In my previous video, I used the MLX9614 infrared temperature sensor with the Arduino and explained the whole process how to perfectly calibrate the MLX9614 temperature sensor using emissivity value. During my first test, I completely ignored the emissivity value and as a result, I got wrong temperature readings is I was using the standard emissivity value of 1 while in reality different objects have different emissivity values. Anyway I collaborated the MLX9614 temperature sensor as per the human skin and then I started getting the actual temperature reading and this way I built myself the most accurate contactless temperature monitoring system for COVID patients. So, if this is your first time using the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor and you are getting wrong values, then you should definitely watch my previous video on the MLX9614 infrared temperature sensor. As this time, I'm planning to measure the temperature of random objects, so I don't care about the minor temperature fluctuations. So, this time, I'm going to use the standard emissivity value of 1 which is a factory calibrated value. I think I have shared enough useful information with you guys. Now it's time to start practical demonstration. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultim Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts, etc. right in the design environment. So you can focus on your designs. Links to the Ultium Designer Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. To make it completely portable, I'm going to use my 4S lithium ion battery pack, which I made for my long range FPV drone. So if you also want to make a 1S, 2S, 3S or 4S lithium ion battery pack, then watch my previous video. I will provide a link in the description. Right now you can see I have powered up the controller board and it's connected with the Blink application. 
you can see the temperature reading in Celsius and Fahrenheit on the OLED display module and also on the gauges and blink application. Now I can use this IoT temperature monitoring system for monitoring the temperature from any part of the world. I have designed it in a way that when the temperature exceeds 55 Celsius, the ESP8266 will also send me a notification message. So first, let's go ahead and measure the temperature of different objects and then we will check the notification part. You can see my hand temperature while using the standard emissivity value of 1. Throughout all these tests, I will be using a standard emissivity value of 1. Now let's go ahead and check the temperature of ice. The MLX 9614 is insanely fast. You can see how quickly it measures the temperature. Now let's go ahead and find the temperature of marble. Just look at the temperature. It's May 29, 2022 and the temperature is around 50 Celsius. Due to the global warming, the temperature is really increasing. We have to do something about it. We have to control the carbon dioxide emission in the atmosphere, which is the major cause of the Earth's increased temperature. Now let's measure the temperature of the marble under trees. You can see the temperature is around 32 Celsius. We need to plant more and more trees to drop the Earth's temperature. Now let's go ahead and check the notification message. You can see how quickly it sends the notification message when temperature exceeds 55 Celsius. I'm sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system works. So without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. These are the minimal connections which you will need to start with the MLX 9614 and ESP8266. You can see no external power supply is added. You can use your laptop or computer to power up all the electronics. You can also use a LiPo battery, but it's good to have a voltage regulator which accepts a wide range of input voltages and gives 5 volt at the output. This way the IoT temperature monitoring system can be powered up using a 12 volt battery, a solar panel, adopter, etc. Let me share with you a more detailed circuit diagram. On the left side you can see a 5 volt regulator power supply based on the LM7805 voltage regulator. And don't forget to add these 470 microfarad decoupling capacitors at the input and output sides of the voltage regulator. The output of the regulator is connected with a VN pen of the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. The MLX 9614 infrared temperature sensor and SSD1306 or LED display module both are I2C supported devices. You can see I have connected the SCL pins and SDA pins of both the modules with the SCL and SDA pins of the Node MCU module. 
while the VCC and ground pins of both the modules are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins of the Node MCO ASP8266 Wi-Fi module. Here is my development board which I use for testing my IoT based projects. If you also want to make the same board then you can watch my previous video. I will provide a link in the description. Now let's work on the Blink application for monitoring the temperature. Just follow the same exact steps. Blink application is ready and now let's take a look at the programming. Before you start the programming, first of all make sure you download all the necessary libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. This is the authentication code which is generated the time we make the Blink application. So I copied this code from the email and pasted it over here. Next I added the Wi-Fi credentials. This can be the name of your Wi-Fi router or your cell phone Wi-Fi hotspot and this is the password. These lines of codes are for the OLED display module. Maximum of the code I have already explained in my previous video on the MLX 9614. The only difference is that this time apart from displaying the temperature values on the OLED display module, I also send the temperature values to the Blink application using virtual pins V1 and V2 which I defined while making the Blink application. Finally, I added an if condition which checks if the temperature exceeds 55 Celsius then a notification message is sent to the concerned person. I forgot to mention the emissivity value. In the setup function, I have added this line of code which you can uncomment to select an emissivity value of your choice and this way you will be able to measure the temperature of any specific object. I have already demonstrated this in my previous video on the MLX 9614 sensor. So that's all about the programming. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.